compliance, the practice of obeying rules or requests made by people in authority. This is the Pharmacy Compliance Guide with Jeff Hedges. R.J. Hedges & Associates has a dedicated team devoted to providing complete turnkey healthcare compliance programs for the independent pharmacy marketplace. R.J. Hedges & Associates offer easy to use policy and procedure manuals and programs that contain all requirements for the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Medicare quality standards, HIPAA compliance and healthcare technology requirements, compounding, fraud, waste and abuse prevention, OSHA, bloodborne pathogen requirements, human resource management, immunization requirements, and business consulting services. RJ Hedges and Associates was live recording at the NCPA 2017 conference in Orlando, Florida in October of 2017. The fit pharmacist, Christina Tarantola, PharmD, was part of the RJ Hedges and Associates team during the conference in recording the Pharmacy Compliance Guide. And now, here's your host for the Pharmacy Compliance Guide, Christina Tarantola and Jeff Hedges. Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Christina Tarantola. I am the host moderator of today's show with the pharmacy podcast, Pharmacy Compliance Guide. So we are here at the NCPA 2017. I'm really excited to be the moderator today as we talk about patient safety. So we have here Tara Modisett, Executive Director with the Alliance for Patient Patient Medication Safety, and Jeff Hedges, President and CEO of R.J. Hedges & Associates. So thank you so much for being here today, and I'm really excited to hear more about patient safety. So let me jump right into it. So what what is the Patient Safety and Quality Improvement Act, and where did it come from? Well, welcome everybody. Uh, It is a lively convention here this year down in Orlando. And the Patient Safety Act, uh, it started way back uh, with Congress passing a law in 2005, and it was signed into law by President George W. Bush. The primary purpose of this law uh, is to uh, affect all healthcare providers and professionals to basically document all medication errors and to share quality information to improve safety of healthcare, to promote culture of safety throughout the healthcare provider's operation, and to encourage the analysis of the event or any event that impacts the quality and patient care, and finally create measures to protect the healthcare provider from litigation. So Jeff, that's a lot of technical information you would normally hear from an attorney. So what does that really mean? Well, yes, it is a lot of information and it is kind of written by a lot of attorneys in DC. But CMS requires of all third parties to make sure the pharmacy has a way to address medication errors and the process by which to make improvements. The Part D providers and PBMs are asking for proof of participation each year. You see that through your certification, our credentialing, so you have to the first of the year. We're doing attestations now, then followed by the uh, credentialing. And the credentialing, they want to see that you are certifying that you have a continuous quality improvement or CQI program. In the future, we're going to see more information about proving that you have a CQI program, and they're going to come into the pharmacy just like they have with HIPAA and fraud waste and abuse. So you see that going to happen. The Patient Safety Act allows the pharmacy to collect information and to conduct activities in a safe space that has legal protection and privilege. And that's a very important item to remember. 
And in the past, there was hesitation to discuss or collect data due to fear of potential litigation. There's so, so there was no sharing of information between peers. This is where the patient safety organizations come in and play a vital role in the Patient Safety Act. They work with the pharmacy to help them collect patient data and give them recommendations and recommendations for improvement. Yeah, and that's a great tie-in to our next question. Really, what is a patient safety organization? Well, um, hi everybody. Uh, what a PSO is, it's a non-governmental ed- agency. It's rec- recognized by the Health and Human Services, the, um, ARC, which is the Agency for Health Research and Quality. And PSOs primarily conduct activities in order to improve patient safety and healthcare quality. A PSO workforce actually analyzes the Patient Safety Act that are reported to them. They work to create recommendations back to the providers with the goal to reduce or eliminate the risk and the hazards that are associated with the delivery of patient care. The quality-related events, the data that's collected and studied, can include incidents that reach the patient, whether they caused harm or not, um, near misses, as well as unsafe conditions. Um, The Patient Safety Act allows the patient safety organizations to offer the federal protection to the data that's reported to them, and it also allows the entities that do report and work with the patient safety organization to receive, in turn, protection for the quality assurance work that they do within their healthcare entities, in this case, pharmacy. And so this way that pharmacies can work in a safe place, in a safe space, to um, decrease near misses and errors and keep the work that they do um, very productive in in the area of quality insurance without worrying about um, exposing that data. Yeah, that sounds like a really important thing for a pharmacy to have to, you know, protect themselves, absolutely. So how can a patient safety organization help a pharmacy? Well, language in most insurance contracts and in the pharmacy verification and credentialing programs require that they need to have a implementation and use of a verifiable documented pharmacy quality assurance program. There's 13 states that have quality assurance requirements, um, CQI or QA regulations that require the pharmacy to show proof that they actually have a program. And um, in the past, collecting quality assurance data was often viewed as a double-edged sword, as Jeff had um, had discussed earlier. Should pharmacies appreciate the learning opportunities collecting and studying this patient safety data and They also needed to comply with the regulations, but since they had fear of discovery and subsequent um, damage to their legal defense cases, they, you know, there was a hesitation to do this. So um, with the Patient Safety Act, they can actually work to improve quality assurance within their pharmacies, work to decrease their near misses and their errors, and know that they can do that in a confidential and safe space. Right. And so how does a patient safety organization protect data, the pharmacist, and the pharmacy? That is a great question. And the patient safety organization, they provide the framework for the pharmacy to participate in the continuous quality improvement program in a protected environment. So as you're getting your uh, attestations right now, and with credentialing, uh, that will follow at the first of the year. It's not just a checkbox that you're signing off on that you have a continuous quality improvement program. Uh, just like everything we've seen, uh, this is a first step. Uh, the PBMs are seeing that you do have it. So you're checking the box off. And in a couple of years, they're going to come in and they're going to start asking what your CQI program is. And that's where your patient safety organization comes in. That framework that we have. So do you have it? And then how do you have it set up? So, um, and again, it's not something uh, we can't stress how important it is because in today's world, everything's about litigation. 
I cannot stress how important this is in today's world of litigation. As Terry just stated, the documentation is not just considered public, it's considered patient safety work product. And it is just not subject to subpoena, discovery, or intimates are admissible as evidence. It doesn't sound like it's a big deal now, but it, when you have an incident where patients or patients uh, who have been injured or a product has been dispensed, it becomes a very important aspect and your pa patient safety organization or your personal attorney is going to be involved working with you on this. And they'll explain this to you during that time. But your patient safety organization is going to be a very important uh, part of this discussion. So you're asking yourself, do I have a patient safety organization? Well, it's that important. If you don't, you need to get one. What do you mean by patient safety work product? Well, um, I'll, I'll take that question. Patient safety work product means any of the data, the reports, the records, the um, memoranda, the analysis, the discussions that your, that your pharmacy does in order to improve quality and patient care. So that work product is anything that you document that you're, you're actually um, using in order to um, in, in order to, as I said, improve patient care. It doesn't include the patient's medical record, the, biz, the um, billing, discharge information, or any other original patient or provider information. And it doesn't include information that's um, maintained separately or distinctly from your quality improvement work. So um, anything that's mandatory um, to be reported is not patient safety work product. Um, reports that you have to fill out for, say, the Board of Pharmacy, those facts, the public record facts, are not patient safety work product. The work that you do and the work that your patient safety organization works on with you is marked as your patient safety work product. And that's, that exists within your, your quality assurance space within your pharmacy. And so, what do you what do you think about this root cause analysis? Can you tell us more about that and how it relates to this topic? Well, a root cause analysis is um, is what we do in order to determine where the problem um, originally came from. We want to be able to um, figure out whether it was human error, manufacturer error, equipment error, something. What actually allowed an error to happen? What allowed a near miss to happen? So what we like to do, the reason, one of the reasons why you, that you collect quality assurance events is to see if you can find a trend or a flag in order to go in and dive in deeper and look at the root cause, the basic cause. If you think about it as a tree, you see the tree on the outside and then you want to get down to the roots and find out where it started to grow what, so that you can actually put some blocks in place or, mm -hmm. you know, speed bumps or bumpers. I love that tree analogy, and yeah, I can. This would be extremely important for pharmacists to know, just so that they can prevent any errors from happening in the future. Um, so I think this is extremely important. And I really, I wasn't aware of the Patient Safety Act, what pharmacists and pharmacies are actually supposed to be doing, and how the patient safety organizations can really support all of our pharmacies. And I think we could really talk about this for a long time. So thank you for shedding light on this, uh, Tara and Jeff and for joining the Pharmacy Compliance Guide today. So Jeff, how do you work with the patient sa safety organization? Yes, uh, our company provides healthcare compliance services uh, for pharmacies and other small practices, which includes the quality assurance and a continuous quality improvement program. Our clients who have, uh, have our pharmacy and compliance, a compounding compliance program, are automatically enrolled with the Alliance for Patient Medication Safety. Their fees are included within our monthly subscription fees. Having a patient safety organization working with you is one of the most important quality and safety items every pharmacy needs and to have a safely uh, operate in today's business environment. It's amazing how many pharmacies and pharmacy organizations 
are not even aware of the requirements of the Patient Safety Act or even have what a patient safety organization is. This is the number one item for pharmacy protection. And every pharmacy needs to look into this. And if they don't, contact us at rjhedges.com or sales at rjhedges.com. And we'll be glad to talk about it. Get you, uh, and if you join our company and get applied to one of our compliance programs, you're automatically going to be enrolled and be, uh, and we'll teach you everything you need to know through the pharmacy, uh, through the Alliance of Patient Medication System, uh, Services and their system, which is PQC Plus. And thank you for everybody for joining us. And our next uh, podcast will be coming out very soon. And have a great day. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to the Pharmacy Compliance Guide special recording live at the NCPA Annual Conference 2017 in Orlando, Florida. Please go to PharmacyCompliance for all of the Pharmacy Compliance Guide episodes or head on over to RJHedges.com for all of your needs with regards to keeping up to date with compliance to meet insurance, state, federal requirements, relying on RJ Hedges and Associates to help you with any matter about your pharmacy business, regardless of how small or how large your pharmacy is. Thank you once again for listening to the Pharmacy Compliance Guide.